All right, we have quite a few people online, so we will kick this off. Um, yes, you would have to make richdad.com accounts. Um, uh, you can, I had sent a link earlier on the Facebook group, but if you don't have it, don't worry about it. We'll create it as we go along. The idea today is that we will go through a few slides which will explain the basics of what we need for the game and then we will get to the game and i'll explain a few things and you guys can go play the game at your own leisure you don't have to play it during the hour but if you can you're welcome to get that started uh emma is emma do you have a question i don't know um hey anna welcome Yes, um, Jasmine's asking if we have to make an account on Rich Dad. Yes, you do, but it's okay if you can today. Uh, we can we can do that later. Don't worry about it. All right, I'm gonna kick this off now. Uh, this is Money Wise Learning, and the idea here is to um, impart financial education for students age 11 to 18. We will have another session for ages five to 10 that Anar will be leading tomorrow at 3 p.m. Central. I got the time wrong a few times. So this time I think it is definitely 3 p.m. Central. Uh, my team, uh, Anar here is online as well and I let her introduce herself, Anar. Hello everyone. Welcome to the Money Wise Learning webinar. My name is Anar Pitre. I uh, lead a private equity real estate firm in Lotus Capital in Greenwich, Connecticut. Uh, so anyone from Northeast, hello. Um, I, uh, before starting Lotus Capital, worked at McKinsey and & Company um, and have an MBA from Cornell. Um, I'm doing this because this is sort of a really nice, fun way to connect what I do and connect my passion for investments uh, to education. And I have two kids. Uh, the older one is seven years old. So this is a really great way to tie in uh, some nice content for her as well. Um, and really excited to kick this off and welcome all of you. And we're looking forward to a great uh, webinar series. Thanks, Anar. Um, so I'm Kavita Bhattake. First of all, thank you all for making the time and taking this time out to come learn here. Uh, we hope to make this useful for you. And uh, my goal is to teach you stuff which will be useful for you throughout your life. I'll be doing the webinars for the ages 11 to 18, which is the one today. Just a little bit about me. I went to Texas A&M and I got a degree in master's in computer science. And I was in IT for almost 20 years. Um, as in different roles, but mostly as an IT manager. I became a landlord um, in about, when was that, 2009. I started buying rental houses and I started putting them on rent. From there, I went into apartment investing where Anara and I actually both met through that, uh, where we both are apartment investors. So we buy large apartments with other people and then we rent the apartments out. I also uh, do life insurance and there's a concept called infinite banking that I, I do for my investors. I'm also a realtor. I just thought it was funny to find a realtor with a mask. So given the situation, um, I help people invest in real estate essentially. That's primarily what I do right now. So I move from the IT side of things to real estate. And obviously as a result, I've become, uh, I'm an investor myself, right? So I want to, I'm very passionate about educating people, adults and children. And I started doing this about two years ago, two and a half years ago in middle school for, uh, for some kids. And I set up an after school club to teach them about finances. And from there, I realized that P kids have time right now at home. And this is a great time for us to learn about finances because this is something that will be useful for us. So coming to why we, why we need this, to be ready for the real world and to make your dreams come true, I believe that it's absolutely essential to have financial education because in a few years you will go to college, you might launch a career, you might start a business, some of you might even have kids maybe 10 years from now. So for all this, no matter what you want to do with your life, you will need to understand how to work with money and to be knowledgeable about money to make this happen. What I hope to bring here for you is to share my experience as a professional 
and an investor and make you money smart. I want to get you ready for adulting so you can manage money well when you have a job, when you graduate from college or even go to college so you can manage your college expenses better. As a high schooler, you'll start driving soon. You'll have gas expenses. You'll want to go to parties. You'll want to do movies and all of that stuff. So I want to get you ready for it to understand how to use money and how to make money and how to save money. What I expect you to bring here is your undivided attention and also to spend time with your parents to finish your homework assignment. You don't have to, I'm not grading these assignments. It's for you to learn about how your parents handle money right now, what, you do, what they're doing with money. And then you can come back with me, come back to me with the lessons you learned. You don't have to share everything you did on your, some of that might be confidential money matters. So I don't have to see everything you've done but I want to, want to learn what lessons you've learned from doing those assignments. I would want you to assign, ask me lots of questions because from questions, we can, we can all learn much more by answering those questions. So um, just a, a break here, uh, folks are trying to join in and they said there's a limit. Yes, there is a limit. So we won't be able to join um, after that limit. Um, although I will have a recording of this webinar so everyone can see it later. Hope that answers it. So what you will learn throughout the series of webinars uh, will be all of these. I'll start today with assets and liabilities. What's a balance sheet? What's an income sheet? The reason I want to go through all of these is because you will need to understand these to play the game that we'll be playing. So we'll do a little bit of learning, then we'll go do a uh, play a game called cash flow. It's online and all of you will need cash flow accounts. Uh, also, there'll be, there are different types of loans and interest rates. Uh, we, we understand the concepts of those loans and the rates. So because again, it, these are real life things. When you go out there, you want to buy a car, you want to buy something else, you'll need a loan. You'll need a college loan for, you know, for going through college. So we'll understand what, what, what the types of loans are. We also will go through at some point in the next few weeks. Uh, insurance, whether it's auto, home, umbrella insurance, the idea of debit cards and credit cards. This is another very important concept for credit scores and building your credit history, which is very important when you first start off so that you do the right things to build your credit score. We also will talk about taxes. What are the different kinds of taxes, the types of retirement accounts, uh, again, if you're looking at your paychecks, so some of you who are 15, 16, 17 will still start working maybe in a store, maybe go somewhere and work somewhere and they give you a paycheck. So how do you know when you look at the paycheck where your money is going, how much of it is going to taxes, uh, do they have a retirement account, what, what, what a paycheck all means. So when you first start working maybe out of a college, you look at a paycheck. What does it all mean? So we'll help you look at that right now. So when you get there, you already know what you're doing. We'll also talk about budgeting, how you budgeting your monthly expenses once you graduate, maybe you go to college even. Uh, we'll talk about investing, what kinds of investments are out there, stocks, bonds, mutual funds, real estate. Again, we, we're gonna try to keep this as simple as possible so you get an idea of it. You're not gonna go off and maybe invest today or maybe some of you will. You'll work with your parents and maybe you'll buy your first home. I know people who bought their first home when they were 15, right? A rental home. So it's quite possible. We'll also have a, a, a session on college planning. I'm planning to actually introduce and bring someone who actually does this on a professional basis for this particular webinar. So please do attend that one. And in addition to all these, we're also gonna play a game called cash flow. So the idea is that we'll go through a few slides and then we'll, I'll let you guys go play cash flow. So you can also play cash flow anytime you want. So it's not restricted to the time that you're spending during this webinar. So let's come to today's lesson. Money has always existed in some form throughout as long as humankind has existed. Maybe earlier it started in a barter system. So let's say I was a fisherman and you, let's say, were a rancher and you had a bunch of cows. I could say, hey, I'm going to give you a fish in exchange for 
a piece of meat or you know a leg or whatever a pakao so in some form of that was some that was a form of money when we first started but over a period of time we've seen the evolution in different forms of of money so whether it was a piece of gold at some point maybe then it became a coin and it went to banking and now we do digital banking where everything is pretty much digital so you swipe a credit card the money comes from your bank account and you know, it just gets paid. So all of that is becoming more and more digital and we are heading towards the, the cryptocurrency. And a lot of you kids might have heard about it. It's still not widely accepted everywhere, but as we go along, that's kind of where we're going towards cryptocurrency. So what can money buy? Money can buy cars. Money can buy, you need gas to drive a car, right? Money can be used to help other people so you can do a food drive you can donate it for a charity you can feed hungry people in africa you can also buy computers you can buy experiences right you can go on a vacation in hawaii uh, you can buy nintendo i don't know minecraft every kind of game out there and you can also pay for college These were some of the myths that I felt like I grew up with, and that's why I wanted to talk to you guys about it today. I heard this a lot. Money is the root of all evil. And I grew up thinking that is true. Most rich people are evil people. <laughs> and I think, I like to think money simply makes someone more of who they are. We know a lot of rich people who really are helpful and who've helped make the world a better place. So it just makes people more of who they are. If a good person uh, makes a lot of money, then they help other people to become, to create more good in this world. The other money myth that I grew up hearing is money doesn't grow on trees. So it kind of seems to imply that there is a lack of money in the world. I like to think of it money as a resource and that can be created if you're resourceful. So you can create as much of this resource as you want if you are resourceful and you know how to create it. The other myth I've always heard and grew up, grown up with is saying debt is bad, you should never have debt and credit cards should not be used. Again, there is good debt and bad debt. And we're gonna talk about these good debt and bad debt. And we're gonna also talk about credit card and how you can use credit card wisely for the benefits that it provides. Oh, someone says, said, uh, this is good. Money doesn't grow on trees and there is money plant, right? <laughs> you guys have heard of that. This is a concept that if there's anything I want you to take away from this, it's this concept of abundance. If what I want you to remember is that what the dictionary defines abundance as a very large quantity of something, the state or condition of having a copious quantity of something, plentifulness. If there's something I want you to remember is that you remember that there's abundance in life. There's abundance of money, there's abundance of help, there's abundance of everything that you want in life. The question is, what do you believe in? I don't mean that you treat up money very lightly or you know, not pay importance to it when you think of it as being abundant, but you treat it like any other resource when you know that you have the ability to create it and the ability to multiply it. But what I want you to focus on is that you, you wanna focus on the abundance of it, never the lack of it, because whatever you focus on, you create more of. So if you focus on the fact that you have more money, or you have better health, then you create better, better health and better, more money. So always focus on what you want to create, not the lack of what you want to create. So someone asked why uh, about abundance, and I want to say why, because the minute you focus on something, let's say I think I'm broke. And I say, I'm broke, I'm broke, and I keep focusing on it, but I really want money. Now, what I'm focusing on is the lack of that I'm broke, but I'm not focusing on the fact that I can make money and there's so many ways to make money. So you create the, the poor people when they stay poor, it's because they always feel a lack of. And when people feel that there is abundance, 
they, they, they always look for ways to create more money and make that abundance happen, whether it's health, whether it's wealth, anything in life, right? So let's talk about some money basics here. These are things I want you to understand because this is important for us to learn this game and to also learn, these are one, probably one of the most important concepts you're gonna learn about money, about what puts money in your pocket and what takes money from your pocket. And that's, that's really what money making is all about. So an asset great puts money in my pocket. So for example, let's say I have a cash in my account and that's sitting in a savings account and generating interest, which is not very much right now, but anyway, um, it, it, it's putting money in my pocket. It's, it's not taking money away from me, but it's putting money into my pocket. I have a rental apart house, a cash flowing real estate, uh, it's putting money in my pocket, whether I do anything or not, the tenant is paying me and it's putting money in my pocket after all my expenses. That's an asset. If I have a stock, I can sell the stock and it puts money in my pocket. I have, I have an office and I have missionary. Now this missionary makes some product and that product is sold and it puts money in my pocket. So I want you to guys to tell me now, what are some of the assets you can think of? Cash, okay, currency, anything else? Other properties, stocks, okay. Houses, cars, is car an asset? Rich parents, I like that one. <laughs> so we'll talk about whether car is an asset or not. Next, manual labor, pillows, machinery, precious metals. Okay, precious metals can be money, can be asset because when you sell them, you make money, right? Cars are not. We'll talk about why cars are not. All right, okay. Side hustles, okay, yeah, they make you money, sure. Valuable jewelry, diamonds, real estate. Okay, I think we got a lot of answers. Good job. I like those. Okay, let's move ahead. What's a liability? A liability takes money out of our pocket. So let's say I have a bank debt. I went to school and I got a bunch of school loans. Now I owe money to the bank. That's my, taking money out of my pocket. Let's say I go to work and I make money. I have to pay my debt off. So I have to pay them money. It's taking money out of my pocket. I have mortgage debt. Again, I buy a house. I live at the house and I need to pay mortgage. So that's taking money out of my pocket. Hey, Arav, uh, if you have a question, please uh, type it here. No spamming, guys. I don't know if someone's complaining about spamming, so please. Uh, if you owe any kind of money to others, it's taking money out of your pocket. So you borrow money from your friend. It's taking money out of your pocket every time you have to pay that friend. Uh, if you in income taxes to the government, it's money out of your pocket. If someone works for you and you owe them money, you owe them money, their, let's say their salary, that's money out of your pocket. Yes, so are all kids liabilities? Uh, mostly yes, but we like to look at you as assets because we're investing in you. So you can actually create, put money in our pockets later. <laughs> <laughs> right now you're a liability. <laughs> uh, just joking, you know. <laughs> All right, let's see. Oh, someone said car. Let's talk about why car is a liability or an asset. If you bought a car and you, let's say, have a loan on the car, that's a liability. Every month it's taking money out of your pocket, right? So it is a liability. Let's see, what are some of the liabilities you can think of? Gas, okay, cars also decrease in value over time. That's a great point. Bank loans, houses, mortgage. Houses can be both. I'll talk about when, so let's say I have a rental house and the rental house is putting money in my pocket. It's a asset because it's money, putting money in my pocket. So let's say the rental house is sitting vacant. Now it's a liability because it's not putting money in my pocket. But let's say I'm living in a house and I'm paying rent every month or paying mortgage every month, insurance every month, taxes every month. It is a liability because it's taking money away from my pocket. Transportation is a need. You need a car. 
But the question is, it's still a liability. It's still a liability because it's taking money out of your pocket. Bills, salaries, yes. See? I mean, the one question are on liabilities seen on a spectrum. Anirudha, I believe, asked that question. Okay. Do you want to answer it? Sorry. Yeah. So, uh, I mean, it's not really a spectrum, right? I mean, it's a very clear cut and white definition, right? The way we are thinking about it is, I mean, this is not a strict accounting definition, but it's a really solid definition as far as financial literacy goes, that asset is anything that puts money in your pocket, liability is anything that takes money out of your pocket. It's just pretty black and white and isn't really a spectrum. So let's say you think about a car. Uh, I use that car to do something else. Let's say I use a company car, right? My company car is used for transporting something. Then it can become an asset because that service that it's providing is making me money and that money will offset the loan on the car. Yes, kids can buy stocks, I, I believe. I don't know if they can set up an account if they're under 18, but they can buy stocks for them through your accounts. Yeah. And again, so I think Anirudh had a follow-up, right? Can something be a liability at one point and turn into an asset? So that's, that's absolutely. absolutely true, right? Yeah, and we'll actually stuff. talk about that today in this yeah. slideshow. Awesome. All right, let's keep moving ahead. What's a balance sheet? Now I have some assets and I have some liabilities. So I own all the assets that's a positive on my balance sheet and I have liabilities, which is the negative on my balance sheet. That's why I have it in green and red. So asset minus liabilities is what we call net worth or equity. So you have to remove all the liabilities you have from all the assets you have. And you could be positive, you could be negative, just depends on how much liability you have. Does that make sense? Any questions on balance sheet? This is a very important concept to understand. It's fairly simple. It's all the assets minus all the liabilities. Hey, Sanjeev, you raised your hand. Do you have a question? Yes, if it's negative, then it's debt. Is income an asset? Yes, it's an asset, but you're working for that income. So the cash you make from that income is an asset, kind of. So anything you're actively working for is not considered an asset. It's just salary or income that you're producing. And we'll talk more about that. Is Bitcoin an asset? It can be an asset, yes. It's just like cash. So if it's sitting in your Bitcoin, your uh, trading account, then it's an asset. Bitcoin is a, Bitcoin is a type of cryptocurrency. Jasmine, does salary go into the balance sheet? No, it does not. Bitcoin is a type of cryptocurrency. It's an online currency. Our gift card assets. Um, gift card can be assets. Yeah, it's, it's equal to cash. You can go buy something with it. So it puts money in your pocket, assuming you didn't buy the gift card for yourself, in which case it's not an asset. Yeah, they have a monetary value, so you can sell them to make cash too, right? So Yeah. Absolutely. Is sales tax a liability? It absolutely is a liability. Everything you buy, you have to pay tax for, it becomes a liability. Um, what is it called if it's not an asset or a liability? Everything is either an asset or a liability. There is no third definition that I know of. Yes, I can do a session on how to do stocks at some point. I'm happy to do that. What causes inflation? Okay, we'll get to those topics later. Uh, not relevant here. Okay, we'll move ahead here. Okay, it's time for a pop quiz. So I'm going to, you're going to see a pop. Uh, let's see. Can you guys see a pop quiz come up? No? Really? Okay. Yeah, I see it. Okay. Okay. Good. Good. Okay. Oh, we got it. Okay. You don't have to answer yes. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, have you guys answered it? It went away. Okay. I'm getting answers. Good. All right. I'm going to. Okay, I'm waiting for everyone to vote. I'm seeing the voting coming up, so I'm letting it come. 
Uh, Baron, if you don't see her, it might be hiding near some other screen, like behind another window, possibly, because it's like a pop-up. Or unless your pop-ups are disabled, that's possible. That's why you wouldn't see it. So the, I'll show you the questions if you don't see it um, after this, okay? I see about 60 responses already. Good job. If you guys are done, great. I will share the results and we'll talk about it. Kavita, while they're doing it, does one question before saying sure. uh, is in income income and uh, an asset. So I guess yes, right? Uh, income is sorry, I, I've lost the question. So you guys, you have to tell me what the question was. Yeah. So is income an asset? Yeah. Um, yes and no because it's it's not an asset in the sense that it the is, cash is earned. Like the cash from the income is an asset. But if you're, all your income is spent on expenses, you're not creating an asset there. So let's say income minus expenses, you have savings now uh, after expenses, then that, exp that savings sitting in a bank account is now an asset. Um, what are clothes for? Uh, clothes are, have no value after, unless you can go sell them, they, carry very little value. So I'd, I'd lean towards liability because you spend on clothes. It's taking money up, away from your pocket. It's not my putting money in your pocket. If you buy a Gucci, uh, you spend, let's say $1,000 on something. And then if you get $800 back when you sell it, you've lost effectively $200. So it's a liability. All right, I'm gonna share this um, poll. Let's see. Is education an asset or a liability? Education, it depends. Uh, so let's say I educate myself. I'm gonna share the results. You guys can see what you guys have answered. Can everyone see the result? So 95% of you said, Cash is an asset, which is absolutely correct. 83% of you said cash flowing rental house is an asset, which is again 100% correct. A vacant rental house, 21% of you said is an asset. It's not an asset. It's not putting money in my pocket while I pay the mortgage, I pay the insurance, I take everything. It takes money away from my, my pocket when a rental house is sitting vacant. So it's not an asset. A car loan is not an asset because again, you're paying for the car. So it's taking money away from my pocket. A house that I live in is not an asset. A lot of people like to think that the house they live in is an asset. We consider them a liability because you do need a place to live. There's no doubt about it. But every month it's taking money away from your pocket. You're paying for the mortgage. You're paying for the so, insurance. So they, they don't seem to uh, be able to see uh, any way they can see the options that you're going through. Yeah, I will. I will do this. Let me stop sharing this. Um, I'm going to take a screenshot so maybe you guys can see that. Yeah, Tatiana, we heard you. You will be able to see. So someone asked, what if I buy a house with cash. It's still a liability because you still have to pay insurance every month and you still have to pay taxes every month on it. A house can gain in value when you sell it and you put cash in your account, then it's an asset because now you created cash. All right, give me a second. I'm gonna really quickly see if I can share this with you guys or you know what, I got an idea. I don't think I, I, I won't try to share the pop quiz with you. Instead of this, let's do this. This is the question I asked, which of the following are assets? And the answers are cash flowing rental house and, a ca and cash. A uh, vacant rental house takes money away from my pocket. A car loan also takes money out of my pocket. 
A cash flowing rental house puts money in my pocket, so it's an asset. A house I live in takes money away from my pocket, again, out of my pocket, so it's a liability. A cash is obviously an asset. Which of the following are liabilities? The liabilities here are highlighted in red. Any credit card balances that you'll have to pay monthly against takes money away from your pocket, car loans and school loans. Dividend paying stocks means that every stock that you own, the company decides to pay you a dividend or income on that stock, and that comes to your bank account. So it is uh, producing income for you. So it's putting money in your pocket. Interest on savings account, again, putting money in your pocket. Okay. Yeah. Somebody seems to realize they're poor, so that's probably accurate because it doesn't seem to me that at you know ages ten to eighteen you have too many assets and right. Uh, and the rich, idea is that so you're probably poor. Yeah. Correct. Yeah, and that idea is that as you get older, you create and focus on creating those assets and not on creating liabilities. A lot of people end up creating more liabilities than assets, and we want you to learn right now how to create more assets because when you create assets, they bring you cash, and then you can go create some liabilities with that cash, because now you can pay for those liabilities with the money that the assets are making. Uh, what is this going on? Is there somebody spamming or everybody's going stop and Robux and... Okay, all right. You guys can take a five minute break. No more chat messages, please, unless they are related to the stop. No spamming, no chat messages. Take a five minute break, please. Get some water, use the restroom. Anirudh asks, why are credit card balances liabilities? So the credit card balances are liabilities because every month you have to pay against those balances. They take money away from your pocket. So essentially, let's say you can't use your credit card everywhere and you swipe the card everywhere. Now you need to pay that back. So. Jasmine, you cannot change your name right now because you're logged in with uh, your or Jasmine, I think you, you, you logged in with your sister's account, so you can't change the name. Is there an age to start working? Most places I see is 15. Uh, I've seen some places where you can do uh, at 14. Yeah, Jasmine um, or Mahek, I think you're right. You can start working in some places, 14, and most places is 15. Uh, Urjit, you probably can't set up a stock account, a uh, uh, account to trade with your own name, but you can um, use your parents' account to set up a stock account and start trading with maybe 100 or $200 if you're really interested. Uh, Adam asks, if you have a paid off car or house, are they still liabilities? Yes, they kind of are because, well, a paid off car is not really a liability anymore because it's not taking money out of your pocket. But at some point it was a liability until you paid it off. Um, if you have a paid off house, however, most of the time you still have taxes, you still have insurance to pay on the house on a monthly basis or a yearly basis. So those are still liabilities. So parent can open a UTMA account. I don't know what a UTMA account is. <laughs> I like that hand sanitizer stock is high. The class is an hour long. So we'll finish at 3 p.m. Central. Urjit, we'll talk about stocks another time. Okay, we are not going to talk about stocks today. I'll cover stocks in another class. Um, yes, if you own a 51% 50, of the company stock, you kind of have the majority uh, shareholder in the stock. 
Uniform Transfers to Minors Act, which is a legal provision in many states that authorizes a custodian to hold effect, uh, assets on behalf of a minor child. This is a good thing to know. I don't know about that. I will have to research that. Thank you for letting me know. Thank you, Ariana. We like having you here too. What's the best business to be in? That's a great question. <laughs> I wish we all knew that, right? But um, generally the best business to be in is the best that you are at, what you're passionate about. If you do that, then you'll really do well, regardless of what it is. That's my, uh, my take on it. Anar, do you have a answer for that? What's the best business to be in? Yeah, I mean, uh, the, the passion thing is a good one, right? Because that, that essentially means that, uh, you know, you're likely to spend more time at it, you're likely to do better at it and so on. But in general, you want to think of anything as uh, what are my possibilities of doing well and be either you're extremely talented at it or passionate about it or whatever else. And what are my chances of um, doing better than others or um, what are the market forces um, going for it versus against it. So for instance, if, let's say if you're really, really great at suing, right? Um, is, you know, starting a tailoring business the greatest idea? It may be, but we know that a lot of manufacturing is shifting to China and uh, it's becoming really low co cost and razor thin margins and so on. So in the US, it may not turn out to be a great business, even though you may be really passionate or really good at it. Right. So you got to think about what am I really, really good at and where are the sort of barriers to entry easier? Uh, where can I where do I have market forces sort of supporting me? Yeah, that's a good point. Uh, someone's asked a very good question. What are trademarks considered as an asset? If let's say someone else wants to come use your trademark, they have to pay you what's called royalty and royalty puts income in your pocket money in your pocket. So it's an asset. A uh, patent, for example, let's say I own a patent and someone wants to use that patent or use the idea in the patent, that they have to pay me royalties. So it's considered uh, an asset. All right, we'll get started in about a minute. Um, so something to think about here is that you can do something you're passionate about, but you can still go invest into something that makes you money, right? So let's say my daughter, is she's very passionate about art and design, and that's probably what her business will be about. But it doesn't mean she, can, she cannot go create a real estate investment somewhere because we know that real estate and some of the other kinds of investments are a long-term way to create money. So she can always do both, right? It doesn't have to be one or the other. Uh, Tice, uh, can we just um, stop the spamming, please? What's an easy way for a kid to get a lot of money? I love that. Uh, there is no easy way right now, but education, educating yourself, and someone asked me this, and I didn't answer that. Uh, is uh, a college education or going to school an asset? Um, I think it can be an asset if you use it well. So let's take an example. Let's say I go get a degree um, as a painter, like a painter, artist, whatever. And then I'm a struggling artist who doesn't make any money. I spent, let's say, 60, 70, $80,000 on my degree. Uh, then I don't make any money or I'm a struggling artist making $30,000 a year, then I would say that's not an asset. You haven't created an asset because now it's taking money away from you. You're really not making as much money as you put into it. So there's something to think about is a return on investment when you do any education. Is it going to be a good thing for you in terms of not only how much money you make, but also, of course, it's something you like. So that's something to think about because sometimes too much education uh, where you're spending a whole lot of money, but you don't have a chance to make that money back can, is not necessarily a great thing. Uh, we will talk about college education, another, which is the best job for a teenager. It depends on what you like doing. It can be whatever you want it to be. All right, guys, we're going to get started. 
again. Let's talk about what an income statement is going to be. Is oh, what an income statement is <laughs> rather. Uh, an income statement is they sh it shows expenses and income and expenses over a period of time. Generally, it can be a monthly statement or a quarterly statement or a yearly statement. So your income includes anything positive, which much, again brings money to you. In this case, it's not an asset, it's income. So you have salary, you have stocks, you have interest on savings, all those are income coming into you. Some of these are generated by assets. So for example, I have stocks and I have savings account, they are generating this income. Some of it is active incomes, which means let's say you go to work in a job. If you don't work in a job, they don't just keep paying you salary, right? So that's called active income. When you're actively working to make money, it's called active income. When money is being made, whether you're working or not, we call it passive income. So dividends on stocks, uh, interest savings, rental house income are all passive income and salary is an active income. Some kinds of expenses most people have, you have a payment on a house, which is mortgage, interest, taxes, car payments, utilities, groceries, restaurants, taxes, you eat out, right? And you pay credit card bills, you have school loans, loan payments. So essentially your cash flow is income minus expenses. Let's talk about this. Sam makes 3,000 a month and he has the following expenses. What's his monthly cash flow? Guys wanna answer that? I am trying to get this poll going, but I can't. That's okay. It's good. All right. That's right. It's thousand. So it's income minus expenses, right? So I'm gonna, I wasn't able to start this. So let's see. Okay. I guess most of you got that. Cash flow is equity. No, cash flow is not equity. Equity is assets minus liabilities. That's your balance sheet. Your income statement is, is cash flow. So equity, uh, bal in assets minus liabilities is your equity, okay? And income minus expenses is your cash flow your monthly cash flow or quarterly cash flow, however you want to look at it. All right. Are there any questions here? All right. Uh, most people got this. This is fairly easy. I just wanted you to remember what income uh, versus assets, um, assets and liabilities are. So it's $1,000 in cash flow, income minus all the expenses. So let's talk about how cash flow patterns look for poor, middle class, and rich people. This is not a generalization. This is just an observation. So let's see what happens here. So with most people who are poor, uh, they don't really create any assets and liabilities. Like I mentioned earlier, they mostly spend what they have, what they make. So every month they go work, they make a salary, and they spend it all mostly on all the expenses that they have. So which is taxes, they pay income taxes, they still pay income taxes, they have a rent, they don't have a house, they don't own a house, they just rent a house. Uh, they buy food, they use it for transportation, maybe a car, clothes, whatever. So all their income is generally spent completely on expenses. So they don't have any cash sitting in their account and hence they don't have any assets. The main problem here is that either they're making very little money or they're spending everything they have. So both of it is usually a problem. So they don't have any savings to invest into any assets and you just have to keep working all your life in this case to pay, pay your bills. You never stop working because now you're not creating any assets. How do they get out of the state? We'll talk about it. So typical middle-class people, they go to college, they get an education, they do pretty well, they make good income. Now, they use this income and savings to create liabilities. So they go buy an expensive home, they buy expensive cars, they use their credit card a lot. 
and they end up increasing their expenses so much that they create a whole bunch of exp uh, liabilities with even the savings that little savings that they may have so you see how this this creates liabilities here liabilities generate expenses so essentially instead of just income in income and expenses now they have liabilities and expenses and they're still not creating assets they still are not creating things that put money in their pockets the reason now what they have is they have expensive homes they have expensive cars now they just have to keep working all the time to pay their bills so they really haven't made any money how do the rich do it well, the rich create assets so they create a lot of assets so once they have income um, they they let's say someone doesn't start rich they start middle class how do they become rich they create become rich by creating more assets when they create more assets let's say whether it's real estate stocks bonds notes uh, patents, whatever it is, that those generate income even without them working. So let's say a person started working, they made, uh, they saved a lot of money, created a lot of assets. Now these assets start generating income. They don't have to work maybe at some point and they can quit their job and they still have income coming in from those assets. So that's how the, the, the middle class become rich. Now, these income, this ex income, they still have expenses, of course. They have to pay taxes. They might even have a house, but their expenses are covered with their income and which is coming in from their assets. That's the difference. So they create a lot of passive income, which means they get paid even when they're not working. Because when you have a rental house, whether you're working or you're not working, you're creating income. Does that make sense? Taxes are evil, I agree. <laughs> All right, let's talk about how you convert assets into liabilities or liabilities into assets. Someone asked this. I have a question. Peter has a liability with his car loan payment of $300 a month. Can he turn this in liability into asset? I'm launching a poll. You guys want to answer the poll? You guys see the poll? Okay. Yes, of course. All right. All right. I'm going to share the poll now. Is anyone else answering the poll? All right, I'm ending this. I think I can share this now. I figured out why it's not sharing before. Let's take this. Can you guys see this now? Ah, cool. So yes, he can turn this uh, car, which is a liability into an asset. And does anyone want to guess how we can do that? yeah that's a great idea yes he can uber here's one way so let's say i mean yes he can uber that's true so let's say he decides to drive the car in the evenings after school to deliver groceries to instacart and he makes a thousand dollars a month after spending two hundred dollars on gas every month so essentially this is what it looks like he has a thousand dollars and he has three hundred dollars for his car car loan payment and his two hundred dollars for gas essentially he created a $500 cash flow. So that's putting money in his pocket now. So his car has become an asset. Does that, does that make sense? Cool. All right. Uh, I think I have one more question for you guys. Let's see. So before we get to that, let's talk about what your assignment for this week is. Uh, we, I want you to talk to your parents about what we learned today about assets and liabilities and put together your in income statement in your home and your balance sheet, what kind of assets and liabilities you've created and what sources of income and expenses are there. Uh, salary counts as an income, not as an asset. I think Sophie was asking that question. Uh, you make a chart similar to this. You don't have to share the chart with me, but 
you will learn a lot when you go through your own expenses and income and also assets and liabilities in your home. So any questions? I know we've been answering questions throughout, but are there any questions? So there was uh, one interesting question, Kavita, some time back. Uh, so are uh, middle-class people really poor people with rich houses? Um, what middle-class people are poor people with rich houses? <laughs> yeah, that was the question. Um, Yes, uh, yes and no, because they're still generating income, they're living well, so I wouldn't call them poor, but they have created some liabilities, but they can turn those liabilities into assets. So let's talk about how, right? Let's say I went and bought a house for 500,000, right? Uh, in Austin, or even 300,000, maybe 10 years ago. I sold the house this year for 500,000. Now I've just created 200,000 in cash. So I did create an asset there. It's just that when that house is being occupied by me, I'm not generating cash on that house. So it became, it can become an asset if you, when you sell it. So I wouldn't say middle class are necessarily poor. Ooh, there are a lot of questions. I can't even keep up. Can a um, cash flowing house become a liability? Yes, uh, so absolutely. Yeah. If it's not cash flowing well, if it's taking money away from your pocket, when let's say the taxes have gone up crazy in uh, Texas, like property taxes, uh, in that case, a cash flowing house can become a non cash flowing house. It can become a liability. If a cash flowing house becomes vacant, your tenant leaves and you don't get another tenant in there, it's a vacant house that's taking money out of your pocket. So it's a liability. Does everyone have liabilities at some point? It's not bad to have liabilities. It's great to have passive income that covers your liabilities, which means if you create enough assets and they generate money for you and they can pay for your liabilities. So let's say I want a fancy car. I go buy three rental houses and that gives me, I don't know, 600, $800 a month in cash flow. Now that can pay for my car right? It's not taking money out of my pocket because these cash flowing houses are paying for it. So you just create enough assets that will pay for your liabilities. Marcy, are you asking a question? I think Marcy has, um, has summarized all the things we need to do. So Okay, we're going to stop the questions at this point because I want to go through some uh, cash flow things, uh, the game itself. So let's do that. So let me quickly introduce the game and then you guys can play on your own when you want to. You don't have to play here. I know we are at the top of the hour, almost eight minutes away. So what is the question here? Go to the previous slide. We'll talk later. Okay. So rules of cash flow online. Here are some rules of how this game works. I'm, I'm, I'm going to share the game with you guys in a second. You have to choose a dream. You can choose any dream you want. There are uh, options of due dreams that you have in your life. Uh, I mean, it might not be your dream, but you have to pick one of the dreams in the game. Okay. The idea is the dream is the reason for you to escape the rat race. So when we talk about the rat race, it's this idea that you have to keep working to pay your bills. As long as you're working, actively working and making money even still, but you have to keep working. The minute you stop working, your money stops coming in. So as long as that happens, you're still in the rat race and your dream is the reason for you to want to get out of the rat race. So when you create your dream, when you make your dream, you will go to your working on your dream in the game once you escape the rat race. And the rat race can be escaped only when you make enough passive income that exceeds your expenses. So we'll come to the game and I'll explain that a little bit more, okay? The, the chat's going crazy. Um, uh, Anar, can you uh, make sure? <laughs> <laughs> Is there any questions there? There's this, yeah, it's going yeah I'll, I'll screen for some questions here. Okay. Yeah. Uh, pick, you have to pick a small or a big deal. So initially, I want you to start with small deals because most of the time you'll have in the game, you'll be given an amount, a certain amount of cash when you start the game. 
So usually a small gay deal is under 5,000, a big deal is over 5,000. So you, you'll usually not have more than 5,000 in your bank account when you start. So you want to pick small deals when you start. Earned income is the income that you, um, you earn, actively earn, right? Like you have to keep working for. You can also give the money to the charity in that game. Uh, so again, you learn the rules when you go there. Uh, you can donate 10% of your total income. Uh, you, can, you can roll the dice twice over your next three turns to get more opportunities. So when you donate money for charity, you get more opportunities to play in the game. That's how the game is designed. Uh, you can also follow uh, buy uh, stock buy a business and buy rental properties like real estate properties, whether it's rentals or it's um, uh, commercial properties like a business and stuff like that. So the idea is, is that you want to buy low and sell high, right? Uh, you want to always buy at the lowest you can possibly. And you'll get an idea once we start playing the game. Once you get enough big and small deals generating passive income, passive income is income which you're generating from not your job, but your assets. Then you are out of the rat race and then you'll go to something called a fast track. So once you get to the fast track, you will have to increase your cash flow there as well to achieve your dream. And once you achieve your dream, your game is done. Uh, this will take a lot longer than the time we have today. So I want you guys to try to play it offline but I just want to introduce the game and then leave you guys with it. Let me share the game. Before I get there, I want you guys to quickly take this before we get to the game. I'm going to send you guys a poll and I want you to quickly answer this for me. This will be the last poll. Okay, some folks want to see the homework slide. I'm going to show it again. Mercy had also uh, just pasted what uh, the homework slide has. I'm going to show the homework slide so you can take a screenshot, okay? All right. Uh, if everyone can attend the poll, please. And if you said no or somewhat or no or maybe, uh, uh, please uh, let us know how we can do better uh, on the Facebook group. We have a Facebook group for this called Money Wise Learning. You can go to Facebook and search. I would love to hear how we can make this better and how we can make the sessions more useful for you as well. So please see us on Facebook here. It's groups slash money wise learning. And if you have any questions, uh, please, if you have any comments, or suggestions for feedback, please join the group and let us know. Um, also, I'm gonna show you the homework slide because a lot of people have asked us. Let's see here. Please take a screenshot of the slide if you need to. Okay. Yes, you do have to do the homework. That's the idea, right? <laughs> if you don't have Facebook and your parents have Facebook, they can use it. There is no club to join there. Um, so you can uh, create your own groups. If you, if you have friends who are on here, you can go to the game and create your own groups within the game. You know what? I'm going to send the screenshot out to everyone. Don't worry about it. I got all your emails. I'm going to send you guys a copy of the uh, 
screenshot of the slide. Yeah, that'll, me, be, that'll be easiest. Yeah, that'll be easier. Uh, let me share the game with you and then let you guys go because I know it's almost, is it three? Yeah, it's three. I don't want to waste any more time there. Okay. It's taking me a second to log in. Give me a second, please. Can you guys see my screen right now? It says cash flow. All right, cool. So, so you can create your own rooms. Uh, I can, let's say for example, I created a room and a password and I can allow six people and you can allow your friends to come in with you and you can play with each other. I, I suggest a group of people, you don't wanna play alone, right? So I created a game. I can call myself whatever. Uh, I can give myself a screen name, right? And I begin the game. So what I want you to pay attention here is the first thing is there's a dream. So let's say this is my dream, stock market for kids. I want to fund a business or investment school for a young capitalist, teaching them the basic of business. I am right now a truck driver. My starting salary is 2,500 and I have 750 in savings. That means my starting cash is only 750. So I choose this, that's fine. Um, don't think that just because you're a doctor and your salary is 13,000 or something, it's a better th place to start the game. The reason is when you're a doctor, your expenses are also high. So your income is paying off all those expenses. So you're really not any better with one profession or the other. You can choose whatever, it doesn't really matter in the game. Uh, the other thing I want you to pay attention, if you guys can see here, is this sheet, you, uh, it basically comes out from the side here. It says financial statement. This is very important in the game. It shows me how much cash I have. So this is $750 cash that I have. I have a total income as a truck driver of 2,500 a month. My total expenses, and these are all my expenses here on the left side, and they all add up to 1620 a month. Effectively, every paycheck I get is um, after expenses. Well, it's, your paycheck is really income minus taxes, but after expenses, this is what I really keep in my pocket, right? $880. Now, you will save that up and you'll see your cash value keep going up every, every time you uh, roll through the game. And that basically gives you more cash to buy things. Um, how do you get there? You go to just Google cash flow rich dad.com, like he, someone said there. Uh, basically, cash flow classic. You can Google cash flow classic rich dad. So, the other thing you want to pay attention to is all the liabilities that you've created. So, sometimes in the game, you might want to go off and pay when your cash value gets high, you might want to go off and pay some of these liabilities down and reduce them. You might choose to, right? And um, you will, as you buy assets, you will get chances to buy assets. So let me give you an example. So I'm ready to roll the dice. So it says give to charity. Maybe I don't want to give to charity right now. I need to make some money first, right? It's asking me to give $250 to charity and I only have 750. So I'm going to pass. Um, then I might get another turn, you know, so assuming someone else is playing. I have a option to buy a deal. So I'm gonna look for a small deal to start with. And it's an option to buy a two bedroom, one bath condo. And it's cost 60,000 and it's negative cash flow, like minus 100. Do I want to buy it? Probably not. It's taking money away from my pocket. Although there might be an opportunity to sell the condo for more, I'm gonna pass right now because I don't need to be losing money. So, so basically this is how this goes. It is past the hour, I know that. Uh, you guys have to drop off, please drop off. Uh, but look, 
I got an opportunity to buy a house. It's fifty thousand dollars, and it puts two hundred dollars in my pocket, and it needs four thousand dollars, which I don't have right now. So I'm going to borrow, borrow, and buy. So I'm going to take a loan of three thousand uh, dollars. Do I want to? Probably not. So effectively, it's going to take away hundred dollars. So no. So anyway, this is how the game's played. I, guess I want you guys to go in and start playing it. And if you have any questions, let me know next week or let me know during the week. You guys have my email, email me um, and let me know. I'm happy to answer questions about the game. I just want you guys to go in and play the game with your friends and learn more about it. Okay. Thanks for logging in today. Have a great day, guys. Thanks, guys. Bye. Bye.